Welcome to Hanover Fair 2014. Welcome to the group exhibit, Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries. We are celebrating the 20 years anniversary of this group exhibition. 158 exhibitors from 22 countries. So therefore, um, I invite you to sit down, have a drink. Um, there's, all drinks are complimentary. And we are going to discuss the topic operation of a power to gas plant in Frankfurt, Germany. And for that, I have the honor to speak to Mr. Phil Dorin, um, Managing Director of ITM Power GmbH. So, welcome. Thank you. Oops. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. So, for those in the audience who should not know who ITM Power GmbH is, uh, could you please give a brief introduction what ITM Power does and what do you focus on? Sure. Um, well, first of all, let's start with the GmbH. The GmbH is the German subsidiary of the parent company ITM Power PLC, which is based in Sheffield, the UK. And the activities of the company uh, not just in the UK and Germany, we're also present in France and the United States. Um, the technical interests that we have uh, in short are basically uh, water electrolysis using PEM technology. Um, we have um, interest in power to gas and in hydrogen as a fuel. In Germany, we'll be talking later about the power to gas project in Frankfurt. Uh, but we also have uh, a number of orders uh, that we've received. Last week we received an order for three stations, three hydrogen fueling stations in London. Um, we also have orders for two fueling stations on the Isle of Wight. The Isle of Wight is essentially an island off the south coast of England. It's quite a large island, about 140,000 people live on the island. Its aim is ultimately to go uh, completely free of the mainland in terms of energy. So become an energy independent island. This is a uh, quite a, a large project, but it's only the start. We'll be delivering two, power, two um, fueling stations into that particular project. One for marine, so for small boats, and the other one will be for um, buses and cars. Uh, and we also won a call in the United States to deliver an 80 bar self-pressurizing uh, station uh, in California at the Hyundai uh, headquarters in California. So our interests are on two fronts, really. Uh, but today we're going to talk about the power to gas plant, I believe. Exactly. We are going to talk about the power to gas plant in Frankfurt, Germany, which is a, a Tuga project. Now, now who and who is Tuga and what does Tuga actually do? OK. Um, yeah, well, for, for non-Germans and certainly for Anglo-Saxons, uh, Tuga might be a rather strange animal. Uh, is it's, it's essentially... Um, it's uh, a Dachverband, and a, a Dachverband is basically an umbrella organization. And Germany is a highly decentralized economy. Uh, it's a highly decentralized country um, with its 16 independent states, and within those states there's all sorts of uh, um, cities and, and villages and God knows what else, of course. Um, the Tuga membership is made up of a hundred what are called Stadtwerke. And a Stadtwerke is effectively a municipal utility. And as I say, Germany is highly disaggregated in its power. It's also highly disaggregated. There are about a thousand of these things from various sizes. Anyway, to answer the question, uh, Tuga is a umbrella organization for about a hundred of these municipal utilities. They're in many cases fully integrated. They have gas and electricity assets. They also, in some cases, have water assets and various other assets. So they're fully integrated utilities spread right across Germany. Um, and Tuga acts as a central agency for generating ideas, which it then puts out to its members. So, for example, the Power to Gas project in Frankfurt, 13 of the members signed up to the project, and so we have a Power to Gas plant with 13 of the Tuga members, but it's represented by Tuga itself. So, what is the role of the, of in general, power to gas in the energy vendor, the energy transition in Germany? Well, I think um, it, it's quite straightforward, really. We have uh, a goal of going to 80% minimum 
renewables in Germany by 2050. We're at about 23% already. Uh, we're heading north quite rapidly. I, I can't see that changing at all. I mean, the roadmap is laid out. We might have some changes here or there. So to look at the core of what energy vendor actually means, it's a transition from a fossil fuel-based economy to a renewable-based economy. And you, you're, act, you're acting in two entirely different systems. In the current system, you switch your light on, it comes on, the utility can manage that. It's in, if you like, it's supply-side managed. If we go to a renewable world, we no longer have demand being instantaneously matched by supply. We'll have wind blowing whenever the wind wants to blow. We'll have the sun shining during the daytime when it wants. Then we'll have holes. So we'll have energy being produced, which necessarily won't be used. And we'll have energy being demanded when it won't necessarily be being produced by these wind turbines and, and, and uh, solar plants. So what we have to do, it's just a, it's a, it's a technical uh, inevitability. It's a movement from taking surplus energy, storing it when you don't need that energy, and then reusing that energy again when you haven't got energy coming, any primary energy coming through from the wind and solar. So I think in a nutshell, the, the, the power to gas market will facilitate the energy vendor. I can't see how the energy vendor can take place without power to gas. It just doesn't make sense. Okay. So uh, how in the power in in terms of power to gas, how much energy in principle would you be allowed to store in the natural gas grid? Okay, I think, yeah, okay. Uh, the natural gas grid, uh, the, the storage capacity in Germany is about 400 terawatt hours. I mean, it's, it's enormous. In, it's split uh, between um, caverns and various other storage uh, devices or, or potential. Uh, and then the grid itself, and the grid is about 200 terawatt hours. Under current regulations, uh, where you're just injecting hydrogen into the grid, um, you could, in principle, store um, four megawatts in total. Um, and the reason for that is nothing to do with the grid itself, and it's everything to do with vehicles. Please tell me more about this. Okay. Um, the, there are about 100,000 gas-powered internal combustion engine vehicles in Germany at the moment. Um, and we have, obviously, gas stations or petrol stations or filling stations, whatever you want to call them, distributed around the country. Um, the gas tanks in those vehicles are the limiting factor for how much hydrogen we can put in the natural gas grid. It might sound a bit crazy, you know, why, why, why is that? Well, essentially, it's because as you, if you put in too much hydrogen into a natural gas tank, which hasn't been designed for hydrogen, it'll have an effect on the material of the, of the tank itself. Now, we don't know if it's 2% or 5% or whatever percent, but uh, in all matters regulatory, we need to be super, super careful. So at the moment, we're limited at 2% because of the vehicles, not because of the regulations of the, uh, the network managers themselves. Okay, so I see where the 2% is coming from. Um, can you tell us more about the project? How did it start and uh, how did it develop? How did you get in touch with Triga? Okay. Um, well, uh, yeah, Tuga, we were actually approached not by Tuga itself, but by uh, the Stadtwerke Meinover, which is a Tuga member. And it's one of the 10th largest uh, utilities in Germany. So this is, this is no small fry. Um, and it's also the local utility for, German, uh, for the Frankfurt region. And of course, we're based in Frank well, we're based in the Frankfurt region, but about 30 kilometers outside Frankfurt. And they'd uh, seen our stand, they'd seen our technology, and they asked if they could meet us and uh, look into our technology. Um, and that process started uh, in 2012, and we moved on um, to explain what we had, what we thought we could offer, how we could work together. Then they had a competitive tender. It went out, I don't know how to how many companies, but it went out to various companies. Uh, we won the tender. Um, I think that was in March 13, and then we delivered the unit in September. We injected hydrogen for the first time into using PEM technology, that is, um, and into the uh, gas distribution network um, in December, I believe, December 4th uh, last year, and we uh, anticipate going live on May the 7th. 
Now, my question is, was ITM Power actually chosen for the project or were there other competitors? Oh, no, as I say, th this was a complete uh, competitive tender. Um, we were competing against other players. I I'm not exactly sure who we were competing against. Um, you know, nobody tells Do us that. Do you know why ITM Power was chosen then? Were there, were there specific reasons? Well, w Or yeah. can you imagine? I, I, I don't think we've been told explicitly why we were chosen, other than uh, from the outset, um, it was quite clear that they wanted PEM. And, and the reason they wanted PEM is because of the rapid response. And in the um, acceptance tests that we're doing now, we have data that shows they give in a command that we move from X power to Y power. And the two curves, so the so-called Zollwert and the Istwert, i.e. The, the input value and the actual value coming from the electrolyzer, they just follow the line and it follows it up along and then there's... Uh, there's um, a simulation of wind, and you can see that it moves up and down like this. And they said up front, um, we want PEM technology because PEM technology and their understanding was quite straightforward. That an energy vendor was, as we said earlier, was based on 80% renewables, 80% renewables that are intermittent, difficult to forecast, and therefore you need a technology that can follow these profiles. And that's why they chose PEM. Or why they chose ITM specifically is maybe more difficult to, to answer, but to, to guess, um, it's we could deliver the size that they wanted, we could deliver on time, and we promised that we would, uh, we would inject hydrogen uh, by the end of 2013 into the natural gas grid in Germany, and, and that's what we did. Yeah, and that's what you did. So are there any questions from the audience? Okay, I see many, so yeah. I'll go down. Uh, I have a question. Um, electrolyzer, there are two main drivers. One is the cost of electricity, the other one is the cost of the electrolyzer. Sorry, I didn't get the first The cost question. of the electrolyzer. Why do you see the trend going like in the price per uh, kilowatt, for example, long term? Where do you stand now and where are you going to be in five years? Well, I'm obviously not going to give you any figures, but I'll give you the trend. The trend is quite clear. Uh, the prices have to come down. We're, we're currently talking of a market that is relative the addressable market is absolutely massive you can make the assumption the addressable market is 80 percent of the german market whatever number that is it's massive so we're now talking about putting pieces of kit out into the field on a one-on-one -on -one basis i mean the economies of scale uh, benefits themselves will be enormous. So if you ignore everything else, there are no further technology gains, there are no finance gains or anything of that nature, the, the, the scale effect itself will be considerable. And there will be other effects as well. Of course, there'll be technology gains and learning curves and all the usual things that you get when new technologies are introduced. If the trend wasn't down, we wouldn't have a technology. Thank you. Uh, I believe the power to gas market will be highly dependent on the delivery infrastructure. And you also mentioned that th this delivery will be highly lim very limited if we, if we want to use the natural gas network. What's your expectation on this hydrogen delivery network in the future? I'm, I'm really not sure if I understand the question. So if, if you are to produce gas from power, yeah. the market will be not where you produce the hydrogen. So the key will be delivering this hydrogen to wherever mm -hmm. it's needed, and the network will be very. Well, important. I, I think I, I think we've got an example here of we haven't got a clear definition of what we mean by power to gas. In the configuration as it is in Frankfurt, it's power to hydrogen gas mixed with natural gas injected into the grid. Now the Tuga Group are arguing that the distribution network. Uh, which is 70% of the total gas network, is big enough to contain all demands right out to 2050. I'm not sure if you're asking me, is the battery big enough, which they're the masters, they're not us, and they say, yes, it is. Or are you, are, are you asking, are there enough injection points? Would the w uh, where would the trucks and the pipelines come in? Uh, or the trucks come in if you're injecting directly into the grid? No, no, it, go, it goes, it's mixed with natural gas and goes in that, sorry, okay, okay. 
Okay. Unfortunately, the time is already up, and okay. I'm very sorry at this point because I see it's going to be a deep discussion into details. Um, if you do have more questions, I'm pretty sure there will be more questions, you can visit Mr. Phil Doran uh, at the ITM Power exhibition stand and B60. It's just right behind right, you. Right there, right, right behind the stage. So once again, thank you very much. It was a very interesting talk. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.